Hey YouTube, The Dark Knight here. Coming to you today with a little rant video. Today I decided to discuss networking and creativity and originality. Now, before we get started, I just wanted to start off by saying that playing the top tier decks for the sole purpose of learning a strategy and ways to counter it, that's not networking. That's a great way to get better at the game in fact. It helps you get familiar familiarize yourself with the top beta so you know it's counters, you know exactly how to beat it. Anyways, as most people know, net decking is copying someone else's deck or their deck idea. Obviously, you can't just claim an archetype that you play and tell others that they net decked it because, well, it's an archetype. But net decking can occur by, by using several very unusual tech cards in the deck that no one's really ever used before, as well as just copying and pasting someone else's deck or their deck idea. <clears throat> Sorry. Personally, I find net decking extremely irritating. In fact, that is one reason why we decided to do the deck fix segment on our channel. The fact that duelists prefer to play top metas just so they can win, or play with a deck they see as winning, annoys us. Now, I can think of can say that Astros and I both agree that duelists should not just be about winning, but in fact, play with a deck that you have fun with, that you like your strategy, its synergy, the way it works, and just everything about it, and let the winning the deck be outside of that. Building an original deck that can fight the meta is incredibly difficult, but it's actually pretty possible. And in fact, if you need any help, if you PM us on if you PM us on DN, we will help you. Now I'm gonna give a little um example. The Dark War deck that we used was extremely rare before we decided to publish it online. I I'll say at maximum four people used it. If that. Now, I fight that deck at least twice an hour on the Dual Network. Now, I know most of you will say, but you put it on YouTube. All this will be that deck, and you should have known that. Well, yeah, I did know that, but, well, I didn't expect it to explode in popularity like it did. I also, I didn't put it on YouTube so that was connect that deck, that was kind of a side effect. But I put it on YouTube to act as a symbol, saying that rogue decks and not so popular strategies can win this, in fact, win this meta. We are um, hesitant on posting an update for our Dark World deck for next mate, for next format because it is getting next deck. It doesn't act as a symbol. It's just other people play it because they see it wins, and that irritates me to no end. So we had to think about posting an update for our Dark World deck. Now, why do we think net decking is bad? I mean, it's just getting a deck and winning with it. That's what you is about. When did it all? Well, yeah, technically that's true, but I firmly believe that Yu-Gi-Oh! isn't just about winning. It's about winning with your own hard work, not someone else's. Imagine building a deck by yourself using ideas that you thought of, testing it yourself, improving it, and eventually making it consistently winning. Now, imagine somebody just witnessing a duel, seeing that, whoa, this deck wins, so I want to win too, and they just play it. And then other people have the same thought process and copy either you or the person that's playing it, then more and more people play it. Pretty soon, it can become a, at least a semi-popular deck. I mean, you made a winning deck, so that's a good thing, but most likely you didn't make it for other people. You made it for yourself. Shoot, others enjoy it, and they have fun, they win with it, but that's not the point. It's not theirs, it's yours. If people never net deck, you wouldn't even have to worry about this if, if every single person was original and made their own deck from cards that they like. Now, we fully promote and encourage originality and creativity for this reason, and the fact that they're both extremely healthy for this game. If every single rogue deck was tier 1.5 and more people play with them, then this game involves far more skill and interaction than just luck and sack. Yes, dragons and spellbooks are overpowered, but they aren't very difficult to bring onto your level, even lower to your level. For example, if every rogue deck Main deck, anti spell fragrance, and paragon and wall, maxi, bandit's emptiness, goes in max, and eradicated epidemic virus. Dragon rollers and spellbooks wouldn't even stand a chance in this meta. They'd be an easy win to bring all those cards if you can consistently put it in your deck. Now, I'm not saying main deck all these cards because, well, it most likely won't be consistent, but main deck with some of these cards can make the top meta far more easier than it, than it would be without those cards. And make Rogue mashups more fun and skillful as well. It isn't like these strap cards are exclusive to the top meta, 
goes in match, coming to run and hunt deck like hundreds, and still exercise a great XYZs, including Shockmaster, and still take down decks like Spellbooks, Dragons, Wind Ups, and Secret Kendrick. Appear during your walk and shut down the top beta, obviously, and still hit decks like Evil Swarms, Constellars, and even really hurt Dark Worlds. Obviously, that eradicated epidemic virus destroys spellbooks, but also because of large dent in Dark Worlds, Evil Swarms, Constellars, and it even has uses in dragons. What useful in dragons? What? Yes, it can be used to see what hand traps they have so you can easily play around it. Uh, seven star swords destroyed. Book of Moon, they have it. Dark Hole, Heavy Storm, and Ghost Sarcophagus. Anyways, back to the main point. If Road Decks utilize these powerful cards, the game will be far more skillful by, by using strategy and skill to defeat any deck that your trap cards can't slow down enough. Obviously, Ghost and Match is perfect versus any Dragon player, but it's virtually useless versus Mermails. This is where skill and strategy comes to play. Now, you need to either use your deck's primary strategy to win before your opponent does, or slow your opponent down with, with trap cards that does help you. The game will just become more thought provoking, more skillful, and more fun. If a 6 samurai player fights dragons without using Iron Wall and Vanity, then it's pretty obvious who will most likely win. Dragons. Dragons. 6 samurai strategy shuts down spells and traps, but dragons use high power monsters. Still think 6 samurais have an extremely difficult time fighting. However, if Sam player uses Imperial Iron Wall, Max D, and Man Infinite, then he has a massive advantage over the Dragon player. Not to mention that she and his powerful negation can stop Ghost Sark, which is just a blaster, and all spell shock removal like Regeki Break, Heavy Storm, Mystical Space Second. Not to mention that the, satis the satisfaction you get from beating a top tier deck with a rogue deck is tremendous. It was one of the best feelings in Yu Gi Oh! Now, some of these cards have drawbacks to certain decks. If you run Hunters, 600 becomes dead if Imperial Iron Walls on the field, and some of your expertise are unusable if Golden Masters on the field. And when Vanny's on the field, you can't summon any equities at all. Now, that hurts a lot because that's your strategy, but does that mean you shouldn't run them? Well, no, not at all. These shots obviously hurt you, but most likely it will hurt the deck that you're using it against far more. If your opponent is playing dragons and you have an iron wall, it really does not matter if your 600 is dead. Uh, dragon rulers can't really do anything except for use blasters effect and make Dragon Sacks to get around Iron Wall, and running cards like Compost can compensate that. So yes, two to three of your cards in your, in your deck is dead, versus the Dragon Blade's entire deck being dead. Now, if you have, if you, for, if luck is against you and you open both cards in your hand versus a Gladiator Beast deck, let's say, well this is where you really think, and you really have thought and skill. Gladiator Beast are known for making Gazaras and Happy Stiari, so spell shocker removal is very easy for them. If you have iron, but however, they also run for the shockers like Dimensional Prison and Bottle and Shuffle. Now, do you decide to wait a turn, stay on your wall, then next turn go off to protect yourself from a Bottle and Shuffle or Deep Prison? Or do you decide to try to go for your big play to two to three back row? You could lose your ex but if you don't do it, you can lose your face downs. This is where more thought provoking comes in, and it's just a more fun game when you have, we have, have this type of decision making to make. This tactic, the tactic of um, putting good cards in your main deck to fight the meta, and also in your other rogue deck you'll come counter, this tactic was not just for the dragons and spellbooks kind of meta. When the top decks were loopless windups and, zector, and executors, cards like Effect Baylor, Maxi, Torrential Tribute, Skill Drain, Macrocosmos, Thunder King, and Deck Devastation Virus won you games sometimes by themselves, regardless of what deck you were playing. Really, any format dominated by two or three decks, which is most formats, they, they can be handled by people just running cards to stop them, and not just running the deck that's winning. In my opinion, if you want to play to win, just play top tier, because they are obviously known for that. And, and But if you want to play the game and have fun, I suggest making your own original deck. Yes, again, I know how hard it is, but it does get easier. And I did just give you a few tips. If you need any additional help, just PM me, the Dark Knight with quotation marks around it, or Absence of Light on Dawn Hour, and we'll gladly assist you.
In addition, if you don't even know where to begin when you pick deck building, you don't even know what strategy you want to use or what deck you want, again, just PM us. It will help you. Now, enjoy the rest of this video, and Dark Knight signing off.